Hello and welcome to my channel. I had a subscriber who asked a question. He said, Sir, I try to locate the perceiver who perceives our thoughts, feelings, actions, sensations, etc. To find the source and abide there, can you suggest any technique to attain enlightenment? I heard that the one who tries to become enlightened itself disappears after enlightenment happens. Okay, so the perceiver of the thoughts, feelings, sensations, etc. is source itself. As a matter of fact, it is you. So you are source and you are the perceiver. Consciousness or awareness is the one who perceives. So how to identify consciousness is very easy. Nowadays, we have easy approaches for that. You sit down and I suggest you have a daily meditation session, a regular one, in the beginning, so you can get used to that abiding in yourself, abiding in consciousness. So you would sit down, close your eyes, relax your body from bottom to top, from the feet up to the head, each body part, and then ask yourself, am I aware? It's that easy. Am I aware? By asking that question, your mind turns itself on itself, on source, and what you perceive or what is being perceived is consciousness itself. So when you ask the question, am I aware? Just be silent. That's all. Be silent and still and remain. Observe. Be the observer. As a matter of fact, you are the observer already. And if a question comes up in the old times, Ramana Maharshi suggested, ask who is having the question or to whom does the question occur? And the answer would be to me, of course. So then you ask, who am I? And by asking who am I, you have the same effect as asking, am I aware? This would be the old approach. I have a new one for you from modern times. That would be, what is my next thought going to be? So imagine you're sitting in meditation. You ask yourself, am I aware? And a thought comes up, which says, for example, oh, in the afternoon, I have to go to the grocery store. Your response to that would be, what is my next thought going to be? And again, it happens. The mind turns on itself and rests in consciousness. This is the game that I suggest that you do in the beginning. Do it regularly in the morning, in the afternoon or at night, whenever you feel like it, so you can get used to that resting in yourself. And then when you go throughout your day, it is normal that we get lost, that we get lost in our senses, that we get lost in our relationships, in our interactions, etc. But when you remind yourself or when you catch yourself that you get lost, then you can always come back to the sensation of, ah, I am. I am. This is also another way and probably the best way to get to source, to consciousness, is to just be still and realize that I exist. I am. And that's it. So, in time, in time, this gradual coming back to yourself, to consciousness, will grow and it will become more and more natural to abide in yourself, in your natural state. It isn't even a state. It is pure being. Tatvam asi. You are that. Thou are that. You know, the old Sanskrit saying. Or soham. I am that. You know, you can also use it as a mantra during the day. Soham, soham. Breathe in, so, breathe out, hum. Breathe in, so, breathe out, hum. That also trains the mind to become more one-pointed. So it is not spread all over everything. And then it is much easier to come back to yourself. 
Now, the second part of your question was the the one who becomes enlightened disappears. Yes, because there is no separate entity which becomes becoming is something in the future that will never happen because everything happens now. Even that which happened in the past happens now and what happens in the future also happens now. So, there is no one separate person who becomes enlightened, but there is a realization that you already are what you are looking for, that you already are that consciousness. Okay? And when that realization gets deeper, it then spreads out to the world, to your, also to your seemingly ex external perceiving, and you realize that everything is consciousness. Everything even that you see. Your body then also becomes consciousness. You realize it is consciousness. Your mind is consciousness. Body, mind, and all, everything that we perceive in the world actually are objects, right? But in the first step, we have to say, I'm not the body, I'm not the mind, I rest in consciousness, okay? And when I rest in consciousness, I perceive that, is con I ask myself, is consciousness ever born? Was it ever born? Will it ever die? What are its qualities? Is it unlimited? Is it limited? These are questions you can ask yourself and just abide in that consciousness. Okay, I hope that video helped. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel. And if you have a question on spirituality or non-duality in general, put it in the comments and I'll be more than happy to make a video about it. Take care. Bye-bye.